I do a Fiverr service where I give people feedback on their rule booklets. And it got me wondering, what makes the best back of a rule booklet? You know? Like, the thing that's going to stay on the table and get passed around as you play. So I decided to look at over a hundred different board game rule booklets and look specifically at the back of both new games and old games, obscure games and popular games to see all the different ways that companies decide to handle it. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game? Here YouTube, I'm back again today for another video about board games. And today, specifically, I wanted to take a look at 100 different board game rule booklets and specifically focus on just the back of the rule booklet. And I found out that there's really about 14 tiers of how people handle the back of the rule booklet. And I went ahead and I rated them and ranked them. And so that's what we're going to get into. So if you're looking to create your own rule booklet, you're going to see some absolutely creme de la creme. But we got to start in the F tier. And so first... Uh, 12 of the 100 had a nothing back, just absolutely nothing on it, useful in any way, shape, or form. Pretty much just you telling your consumer, yeah, our rule booklet is so darn fantastic, we don't need any information there at all. This one's from a game from this year, 2023, so this is still something that people are doing, and, and we can all agree, just stop it, just stop it. And I know that player aids are amazing sometimes, but, 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 but no, you need to have something on the back. Continuing on, we have uh, next, useless info on the back, and I'm going to give a special pass if you put a qr code to a how to play video on there we're going to bump this up from an f tier to a c tier but nine out of the 100 had the useless info on the back just absolutely nothing helpful at all when they really could have put something at all this is one of the best games of last year flamecraft and yeah nothing on the back here so continuing on with the f tier and we've had quite a lot in the f tier i think we're up to about 30 I think it was like 30 of the 100 are in the F tier, so come on, do better. Are the useless ads on the back, which is pretty common, I guess? Like, King of Tokyo was like, yeah, we're going to advertise ourselves." Like, what, what, huh? Huh? It's weird. Uh, yeah, so at least I will put this one slightly higher than the two other lower Fs, just because at least now you're trying to make a little extra cash, and I understand why, and I can appreciate why. And we do have one more left in the F tier, which is Ganymede here, which has this unique money-saving idea, where this half of the rule booklet is in French, and this half of the rule booklet is English. It's still, you know, not really that friendly for the consumer or whatever, but... I do appreciate the fact that you're trying to save some money there. So now, moving into the D tier, we have the useless information slash history, and we had three games that did this. And I do put this above the F tier because I appreciate you really trying to immerse me in the theme a little bit more. But still, at the end of the day, I'd really probably rather have some useful information here. So, D tier. And then we have the next T tier of the D tier, the nothing slash no space. So this is one where they use every last inch of the rule booklet pretty much because they're trying to save space and printing more pages in the rule booklet can be expensive, you know? So there were eight of these. This is pretty common as well. And it looks, I will say, it seemed like it was more common in some of the older games, not necessarily some of the newer games for like the last five to ten years. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to read into stuff like that. But I do know that I'm excited because we have now moved into the C tier. So every rule booklet back that we get from this point on, I do think is going to be, you know, somewhat helpful and useful to some extent. So this one, a lot of the time, will have variants, advanced rule sets, strategy tips, and things of that ilk. Uh, and so we had five like that. And while most people probably are never going to use the optional advanced rules, it is nice because when you have those there, you know, if your game doesn't go so well with your gaming group, but they're like on the cusp of maybe liking it, then you can say, oh, we can mix in one of these and then, hey, it'll, it'll be better. It'll be better. All right. Now, continuing on the C tier, we have the component list. Now, I do want to say that some component lists, I think, are straddling the potential B tier with how useful they are. And I'll give you an example. So here's the Terraforming Mars rule booklet. The back, we have pretty much nothing, the credits. But we do have a component list back here. But I would say this is still C tier. And honestly, I think you could argue it's D tier without pictures. However, when you come to the Arcane Wonders uh, uh, Sheriff of Nottingham, we have a component list here, which is actually super helpful as well, because it, it tells you information about how you're going to set up the game, which I think 
think would then bump it up into B tier, which uh, let's just, just get into B tier because this is one of the most common ones we saw, was the one trick ponies. And so 15 out of the 100 that I checked out were what I like to consider one trick ponies where they focus on one very specific aspect of the game and really hammer home on it. So maybe that's iconography. Maybe that's uh, the scoring summary. That was one that was quite prevalent. I think I saw three or four. Maybe it's specific cards and how they interact with the factions in Smash Up. But one thing that you really chose to focus on, which once again, I still think it's great. And that's why we're in the B tier. That seems to be the overwhelming majority of them. But as we continue to climb, we get what I like to call the jack of all trades. So this will have, you know, quick reference potentially minus the scoring. So it doesn't have all the information you need. But generally, you're going to have quite a good deal of information on the back of this. Maybe it's iconography. Maybe it's key terms. Maybe it's variants like we talked about earlier, or a component list or something like that. But these are very, very useful. And one thing that I want to spotlight that I think you should do, you know what, we'll do it in the next one because I feel like these are a better example. So continuing on the B tier, we have something that's a little bit more ro rare, which is the robust round guide. So I have two of these in the 100 I checked out and I absolutely adore these. These are essentially when you have a really complex game, like for instance, say Junta, where you list out all the different phases and then you put text here, like a good deal of text telling people how they're going to be able to play. And this can make a game run so much smoother. Now, what these two games, Yokohama and Junta, do really, really well, in my opinion, is by including the page numbers as well. Because, as, you know, that's... Like, why not? Why would you not? You know what I mean? Now, continuing on, we are now into the A tier. And this is where things get hot and heavy. This is what you should be shooting for. I will say, as a reviewer, as a board game player, I feel like every single person's rule booklet should shoot for this if it is something that you can do. And everybody's game is going to be a little bit different. Maybe you got a huge, massive player board that's going to have tons of information. Uh, but there's always useful information that you can have on the back of your rule booklet, I do believe. And this, in the A tier, the, top, the, not the, the bottom of the A tier is the use. Useless butt, dot, dot, dot. And this was eight out of the ten that I checked out. And that means that, yeah, your rule booklet is just a standard rule booklet, but you've also included a whole other separate guide to help people with, which is also, which I think is way better because that then means that two people could be looking up a rules problem at the same time instead of just one person. So take, for instance, Dominion, one of the most popular games of all time. You know, the rule booklet, and I will spotlight some, some amazing things some of these rule booklets did in a future video, so stick, click on that subscribe button if that sort of thing is interests you uh but that's just a standard rule booklet. But then they also had the first few turns with this robust guide. And then the additional rules and description of all the cards in its own separate thing that's not the rule booklet. So one person looks at this, one person looks at that. And so I just absolutely love that. And you can see some massively popular games. So Scythe did it. So useless, but we also give you this fantastic quick reference guide. Uh, and then this one, this one has history, Academy Games, and then these. Oh my goodness, look at these. Freedom, the Underground Railroad. Look at this, Every Everybody, you, you, you get these? That's so much useful information. But that is the uh, that tier right there. So moving onward, we have 9 out of 100 people getting an A for the nearly everything, plus scoring, plus in-depth turn info. This, uh, quite frankly, is what I feel like is like look at this rules reference right here for for what is this Lords of Waterdeep it has setup information sequence of play actions and turns final scoring it has pictures of the different components in the scoring example down here like this is what every game company should aspire to and some of these are better than other ones but all of these rule book all the back of these rule booklets right here really help Gamers, play your game so much smoother. Look at the one for Zaya, Legends of the Drift System. Look how much information was crammed on here versus some of the crap we saw earlier where it's just, you know, hey, it's, it's a picture of another one of our games. Which one of these do you think is going to hit the table more often if they're both the same complexity? And you know the answer. It's obviously this one because it's just going to be so much easier to run and navigate. And you're like, well, well, how is this possibly? The, is this the end? No, there's one more. There's the S tier, the tier that everyone should aspire to, but it's going to cost you a little bit extra money. So 
you know, it gets its own separate tier. And that is useful and. So we had useless but earlier where it's like they have a standard rule booklet, but then they have an also thing, uh, a thing that helps you out. This one is we actually have a great back of the rule booklet, but we also have something else that's going to help you learn to play. So that's from Twilight Inscription. Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders. Great example. So uh, they have kind of like a one trick pony here. Maybe you could argue two trick pony here going over all the icons and the cards. This is fantastic by itself. But then there's also the quick rules here. Like, oh, it's so good, and I love when games do this, but once again, it is going to cost you some extra money to do this because, and then this one, so this one is a more interesting one. This is from New York 1901. So back of the rule booklet, got a quick reference. We got some things about some bonus challenges. But then they also have a beginner's version of the game if you want to learn the game a little bit faster, like a mini version of the rules. Some really interesting ideas here. But those are what I would consider to be the 14 tiers of rule booklets. Let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite rule booklet of all time? Because obviously I only covered 100, I couldn't cover all of them. And let me know in the comments below what you think the most important aspect of the rule booklet is. And if you're looking for help working on your rule booklet, click on that Fiverr link down below. I do a bunch of stuff pertaining to uh, Kickstarter board games, rule booklets, stuff like that. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.